got a 2006 Toyota Sienna here. It's got an SRS light on. Actually, it's got a blinking SRS light. Let's check it out see what we got. All right, first thing we'll do, we'll verify the complaint. We'll put the key in, we'll turn it to on, and then we'll look for the SRS light over here. And when, the, when you turn the key on for the first six seconds, that SRS module is checking with all the systems to see if there's any fault. And if it finds a fault, after six seconds, it'll either keep that light on or it'll turn it on and flash it, depending on what the code is. So there it is right there. All right, there it went out, and you can see it came right back on. And yeah, it looks like it's blinking. So yeah, we definitely got the code going on right now. Let's check it out, we'll scan it, see what we got. All right, I'm gonna take the Autel here, take the plug, hook it up to the data link connector that's right under there. All right, we'll go ahead and scan this for codes, see what we got. All right, done scanning. We got one fault in the engine computer, two in the SRS module. Let's see if this is related. And yeah, we got P0504 in history, so it doesn't look like it's current. Brake switch AB correlation. That's not going to be related to our SRS problem. That is most likely a bad brake switch going out. Um, there's two switches in there. One's always on, one's always off, and then when you press the brake, they switch. And so when the computer sees the signal the same, it knows there's a problem. So we will not worry about that one right now. And let's see what we have in our SRS module. And current and history, we have a B0111. It's going to be an open inside squib RH circuit. So, well, let me go to that side of the vehicle. I'll show you what's going on. All right, what the heck is a B0111 and what the heck is a side squib? Well, real quick, this is your side squib. It's the side airbag in the seat. And the B0111 coincides with this one. If you had a B0116, it would be the other one over there. That would be the side squib LH, side squib RH. So that's how Toyota um, names them. But the side squib RH is a fancy, um, fancy terminology for front seat side airbag. That's all it is to it. And then, so the op what the uh, code is telling us is we have an open in this circuit. And the circuit is between this airbag, which runs right in here, and the f wiring that runs through the floor and goes to the SRS module over there. And Toyota has a fancy name for the SRS module and they call it the center airbag sensor assembly. And so basically we have an open in the two wires that run from there over to this airbag. And those two wires are when the, uh, when the airbag assembly or the SRS module gets all the inputs in that says, hey, we're in a crash, we need to fire this. It'll send the signals along those two uh, wires and it'll deploy so that's why we got to be careful troubleshooting this circuit we don't want to have a nasty surprise and accidentally deploy this SRS and if you didn't know what SRS stands for supplemental restraint system why is it supplemental because right here these things that's your primary restraint system your seat belts and so while we're standing right here the most common culprit for this B0111 is this connection right here. You can see it's not in a very good location. This is easily kickable and um, you can damage the wires and connectors right there fairly easily. 
and so yeah this is this is the the common area that uh, has problems there's TSBs on this and uh, recalls so definitely a problem and so what we're gonna do is uh, we'll we'll look at this circuit right here and troubleshoot it now the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna clear these codes we already know what the codes are so I'm gonna clear them and I want to see if these codes come back immediately so that we know our fault is occurring right now that makes troubleshooting a little bit easier and so now I'm fairly confident that's occurring right now but we'll just make sure All right, you can see no fault codes detected. So we're gonna back out. I'm gonna turn the key off. We're gonna let everything power down. And we're gonna fire back up and scan again. And once we, uh, once we put the key in, it's going to do its six second check and if there's a problem in that side squib it's going to find it real quick all right we'll put the key on we'll do the same thing we'll look at our uh, SRS light there and see what happens went out came right back on so my guess is we should have a fault code back in the system let's scan it again all right, we're back in the SRS module. We'll go ahead and uh, scan for codes. See what we got. And we have them again, B0111. So we know it's occurring right now. So let's do some more troubleshooting. All right, I'm gonna shut this down. We're gonna go under the hood and we're gonna disconnect the battery. All right, I'm just going to take a 10 millimeter socket. It's going to disconnect the negative battery terminal. I'm going to tuck it down out of the way so it doesn't come back in contact. We're going to count 90 seconds, minimum of 90 seconds, and that allows the SRS module to power down because there is a a power source inside that SRS module that has the capability of deploying these airbags and um, but it only will hold that charge for 90 seconds so once once we pass 90 seconds then we're safe to work on the system all right now we'll just move the seat all the way back and usually if we just mess with it yeah we can just pull that right out and then there's a connector right here and we can pull that back. That white piece right there, we gotta pull back. I don't know if I can do it with the camera in one hand. Oh, yep. Pull it back. And we're gonna look for any problems. You know, see if the wires are broken right there. If the wires are messed up right in the wires are messed up right in there. Most most of the time it's a problem with those connectors right in there. Mating up with the ones over here. And so sometimes you can just spray some contact cleaner in there, spray it on both sides, let it dry out, plug it in and out a few times, and then fire it up, clear the codes, and see if it comes back. A lot of times that will clear it up. It's just a bad, bad connection between that and this. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find out, is there a problem in here? So if we can, we can manipulate this and then our problem goes away, most likely our problem is right here. So I'm going to unplug it and plug it in back a few times and um, then we'll uh, hook the battery back up and see if our code's still there. I'm also going to take this zero residue contact cleaner, spray inside the connectors there and uh, see if I can't clean them out. All right, I worked that connector back and forth a bunch of times and uh, sprayed it out with cleaner. And we got the battery back connected. So now I'm going to go back in there, clear the codes, and then we'll run them again, see if we made any difference. Now, usually SRS codes will stay in memory, even with the battery disconnected. So, but we'll turn it on. It's going to do a six-second check, and let's see if this light stays on or off. And as you can see, it's off. 
right now. So let's go in and scan it for codes and see if it only has a history code. So as you can see, disconnecting the battery cleared the code from our engine control module, but we still have the SRS fault. So let's go in there and check it out. Uh, it should be a history code because as you can see, the airbag light is still off. So let's see what it says. and we can see that it's history now so we'll clear this and I'll cycle the key again and uh, take it for a test drive and see if we can't recreate this fault. See if it'll come back with uh, movement and bouncing around. If not, then we have a fix. Alright, I went on a good test drive. Went over lots of speed bumps and down bumpy roads. And no SRS light. So this should go off after it does a six second check. And there you go. So we have a confirmed fix. Very common problem having that plug go bad. Or at least the contacts go bad. Now, if I would have had a problem in the driver's side squib, I would have went down and I would have been troubleshooting that yellow connector right there. Yellow means SRS airbag systems. So I would have done similar checks on that one right there. Now, I could have done more checks on the system, but I'm not going to go through any of those in this video. That's the most common problem right there, and that's why I went right after it. Now I'll just go out and say it, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I don't recommend anybody work on SRS systems unless they've been trained. I've been trained on how to work on these so I don't have a problem, you know, working on these systems. But I don't want anybody out there getting hurt because they don't know how to work on these systems or they did an improper repair. Uh, I don't want an airbag deploying when it shouldn't and I don't want an airbag to uh, not deploy when it should and get somebody hurt or killed. So. This video is definitely entertainment purposes only. And just a couple safety precautions. When you see yellow on a vehicle, that means SRS. And on these Toyotas, do not touch anything, even just unplugging and plugging it in like I did, until that battery has been disconnected for at least 90 seconds. And do not ever do resistance checks on an airbag module. Just hooking up your DVOM and sending a little bit of voltage th through these airbag modules can deploy them, so even when they're disconnected. So do not do resistance checks on airbag modules. Oh, and just for reference, you have the driver's airbag, the passenger's airbag, and then this is the side airbag. So don't get confused and call this a side airbag. This is the passenger airbag. Now, at one point during the uh, recall, slash technical service bulletins that uh, Toyota put out on this issue they were replacing the uh, the side airbags for this problem but that can get expensive and I suspect it wasn't fixing the problem all the time because the problem was in the connector down there so eventually they came out with this wire repair kit so here's the part number for this vehicle right there now in most cases manufacturers do not authorize um, repair kits to wiring on SRS systems at all. So this is one of the exceptions that Toyota has made and um, and then but so this is a much cheaper fix than re replacing the entire um, wiring harness and the SRS module or I'm sorry the airbag module and so definitely a cheaper option. Now because I, I could not get this um, fault to come back once I cleaned it I believe this vehicle is fixed and we don't need to go any further. So in order to save the customer some money, I'm not going to install this repair kit on this vehicle at this time. Now if this vehicle comes back for the same problem, at that point I'll recommend to the owner, hey, we need to go ahead and, um, and fix it properly by splicing these wires in. And Toyota has a very specific way they want you to splice it and everything. So just as a entertainment information only well there you go hope you enjoyed this video on how i troubleshoot a b0111 on these toyotas and as always if you like the video make sure to give it a thumbs up
Thanks for watching.